My name is Jeremy. Uh, today I'm going to teach you how to uh, repair a hydraulic vibrator motor. I'm using a uh, test stand here we have. We will uh, determine the slip and the pressure. When uh, we place this in here, the slip is basically the amount of oil passing underneath the drive gear. If too much oil passes underneath the drive gear, that will not allow the drive gear to spin uh, to turn this shaft, which will turn the eccentric on the tip. Uh, when we uh, test the motor, it runs in a counterclockwise position, but when we actually do the slip, we will reverse it and run in a clockwise position. And after uh, checking the slip here with our unit, um, well now we will go ahead and take it apart to check for any visual damage to the motor. Um, with the test here that we've done, uh, we determined if the slip is good. Uh, it was reading .2 on the slip. The uh, range of the slip is uh, zero up to .5. Um, anything after 0.5, uh, the slip, there'd be too much oil passing underneath the gear. Now we are, after placing it in this jig here, <clears throat> we're going to take these two cap screws out, inspect the end cap for any damage. As you can see here, using a wooden pick, we'll run across there, be a little bit of wear there, which is normal for a used motor. We'll take this O-ring here off, which we automatically throw this O-ring away and replace it every time we rebuild. I'll take this end cap and lay it over here on the 600 grit wet dry paper to sand out the marks. As you can see, most of the marks have come out. There are a few little scratches still in it, which that's okay. When sanding the end cap here, after sanding it for maybe up to a minute at the most, if you can't remove most of the markings, you probably need to replace the end cap. Um, but if you can sand it down too far. Next we will take and remove the drive gear using a very, very small screwdriver. We'll stick it down in the middle of the shaft and apply pressure to the side as we pull it out. On the shaft, we will be looking for wear marks here where the seal area rides. We will also be checking the teeth. Okay, here's three gears. Um, determining with bad ones versus good ones. As you see on this one here, it has burnt marks and wear that gear is no good. Second gear here also, you can see this shiny ring here. That again is not a good one. The seal has worn in, into the finish of the gear. This gear here, there's no wear marks, no patterns of any kind, which is now a good gear. 
after inspecting the, the seal area, also you need to inspect the actual gear teeth to check for any chips or any debris of any kind that could be lodged in there that will get lodged inside your motor body. After determining whether your drive gear is good or bad, and if you do have a good one, you need to take over here on the 600 paper, you need to sand the top side of the gear here to knock off any burrs or chips or anything that could have gotten in the gear. Now, we're going to remove the idler gears using a magnet. We'll pull these gears out. Again, we will visually inspect for any wear, debris, chips. If they're not seeing any, take them on the 600 paper also and smooth out each side. Then visually inspect again. After removing the gears, using a wooden pick, not a steel pick, because you'll scratch the aluminum, we will run it across right in through this area here on both sides of the pocket to feel for a step. There is a very, very slight step here, which is normal wear for the situation. Now, this here is a bad one. As you can see, as I run my pick across there, there's a big step. In this instance, this is what's happened. The drive gear has eaten down into the body, which in turn allows the, the gear to be pushed up and the fluid to bypass underneath. After determining the motor body is good, we'll use the pair of snap ring pliers. We we'll remove the snap ring from the motor housing to remove the bearing. We will always throw the the uh, machined washer away. Always replace it every time you rebuild. Also, we will remove the seal. The seal needs to be replaced every time you rebuild the motor. Now we will determine the uh, wear on the shaft. We will ins visually inspect for excessive wear or dense grooves because if the weight slides on here and if this is rounded at all, then the motor will just spin and the weight will not spin. The shaft here looks really good. We will take the snap ring off that holds the bearing onto the shaft. We will automatically throw this away and replace it every time. We'll press the shaft out of the bearing. We will throw the bearing away also. Using this tool here, we will push the pin out. Clean it up a little bit here. 
Always replace this pin also every time you rebuild. Press it back into place. Make sure it spins freely with no drag. And place the snap ring back on. Make sure it locks down into place. Using the solvent we would, in a brush, we would clean up all of our parts, get all the oil, any excess debris or anything else, and blow all the solvent and everything off before we reassemble. Now, after having all your parts cleaned, we'll reassemble the motor. Place it in our fixture and clamp it down. We'll take our seal. We'll cover this hole here with grease for lubrication for the drive shaft to slide through. Place a little grease here on this O-ring. We'll set it in. Evenly press down. Put into place. Next we'll take this machine washer, putting the lip down. We will set it on top of the seal. Using this pricker, we'll actually prick three to four times around the side of the housing. This will allow the bearing to stay in place as the shaft spins. Next we'll take the shaft assembly, place it on there. Using this tool with a hole, we'll gently tap it down into place. Then we will take the snap ring, place the snap ring on. Then we'll take it, we'll flip the motor, lock it back into place. Next we'll take the drive gear, give it a little extra lubrication of some oil, hydraulic oil. Slide it down in. Sometimes you'll have to turn the shaft for the pin and the slot to line up for it to fall into place. Spin it, make sure it spins freely, it does. Take your two idler gears also next. Place them in. Spin, make sure it's free. Next, take your end cap, your O-ring. Line up your screw holes, take your cap screws, get a little bit of oil because you have metal on aluminum. Taking your wrench then and snugging them down. Then we'll take a torque wrench, which is inch pounds. We'll set it at 240 inch pounds. If you have a foot pound wrench, uh, it will be 20 foot pounds.
Take the motor out, make sure it spins freely. That's how you repair a vibrator motor. And after you've repaired your motor and got to put it back together, you can take and put it in your slip tester again and recheck all the configurations.